What's up guys, Bucky here. And in this series, we are gonna be learning about Docker. Now, for those of you guys brand new to Docker who aren't quite sure what it is or even when you would use it, let's go ahead and imagine this. So say it was your very first day starting at a new job, you just got hired as a software developer and your boss slides you over the new company laptop and tells you to start installing all the dependencies that you're gonna need. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna install some Python and uh, what else we got? Maybe uh, Postgres, we need a database for sure. And what's one more thing? Uh, let's say Django. And what is this? Not compatible with version of Postgres, huh? Okay, so it looks like we have to install a different version of Postgres. Uh, okay, so, you know, things not going that well so far, but let's just go ahead and install a different version. So I'm gonna install Postgres uh, V2. And what is this? Uh, Postgres already installed. Oh, crap. Okay. So, oh, I know. What if I install it with brew? So, install brew. Okay, that's good. And then brew install Postgres. Okay, now you have five Postgres installed and nothing will work anymore. Okay. So, clearly things are... <laughs> <laughs> not going that well. I mean, we already installed a bunch of different versions. I'm reading through Stack Overflow posts and they're out of date and confusing. And the cute girl sitting next to me thinks that I'm an idiot and it's not even lunchtime yet. Now, before we think about quitting and moving to Canada so we never have to show our face at that company again, let me tell you about a little something called Docker. Now, what is Docker? So Docker makes it easy to install and run software without needing to manually install and configure a ton of dependencies. So how does it do this? It does this through something called containers. Now this is a very, very simplified diagram of a container. Again, in this first introductory video, just wanna give you the really high level concepts. We'll be taking a deep dive into the container architecture later on and see exactly how it interacts with your operating system and hardware. But again, like I said, very brief overview for now. So let's get back to it. What is a container? A container is an environment that is isolated from the rest of your operating system. So in this diagram right here, this black laptop is your main laptop. Think of it like your work laptop. And this green laptop is supposed to symbolize, if you can't tell by my uh, beautiful artwork, an environment that's kind of isolated from the rest of your operating system. Now, what do I mean by that isolated? That means that within this container, you can install any software you want. You can actually delete any files you want, mess with configurations, do whatever you want in here. And no matter what you do, your parent operating system is never affected. So unlike here, where if you just have five different versions of Postgres installed and your environment is all messed up, you may have to like reboot or reinstall your entire operating system if things get really bad. But with Docker, what you can do is essentially just delete this container and create a brand new one. Now, some of the more tech savvy people out there may be noticing some similarities between Docker containers and virtual machines. And they do have a lot of similarities, but some key differences as well. Now this website right here, docker.com slash resources slash what container is a good overview and actually has some pretty cool diagrams that uh, I'm just gonna reference instead of trying to draw my own about the more of the specifics between a VM versus a container. But real quick, with a virtual machine, you essentially have a separate mini operating system running within your operating system. So this diagram on the right is reflective of an environment running multiple virtual machines. So you see uh, A, B, and C. Now you can see that each one of these is pretty much like a mini operating system, which of course, an operating system running within an operating system, it's gonna consume a lot of resources. Now containers, they take up less space than a VM because they actually share the same operating system and hardware resources as the parent operating system. All right, so more on this later, but for right now, let's just head back to docker.com 
and we're going to install something called Docker Desktop. So we are going to be using this throughout the duration of these tutorials. So make sure that you follow along with this. Again, docker.com, if you go to products, you can click on Docker Desktop and I'm going to hit download for Mac because I'm on a Mac. And actually what I did is I downloaded it before this tutorial began because I figured you guys wouldn't want to, you know, just sit here and watch it download for however long it took. So just going to double click this. All right, now just drag it over in applications. All right, so apparently we got it installed, but where is this thing? Well, check it out. Open up your launch pad and click on this Docker icon right here. And okay, yep, I trust it. It's cool, it's cool. And for this, yes, I do trust it. And all right, it looks like we got something going on. Now, another thing that I wanna point out is in the top right corner right here throughout this tutorial you are going to need a docker hub account so let me pop this up so if you go to hub.docker.com you are going to need to sign up for one of these accounts create an id an email a password and very simply docker hub is more or less like github for docker there's a lot more to it than that but for right now just think of it like that so create an account and then once you do that, if you right click this icon, you can actually sign in with your Docker ID. And this is just your Docker Hub account. All right, so now that we have our Docker Hub account created and apparently we have everything installed, the last thing we need to do in this tutorial is just verify that everything was installed and configured correctly. So in your terminal, whatever terminal you're using, go ahead and write Docker version and hit enter. And if everything went smoothly, then you shouldn't see any errors and you should see some output. Again, we're going to be going over all this output in the following uh, tutorials, talking about the difference between the client and the server, yada, yada, tomato, tomato. But for right now, all we want to do is ensure that we have everything set up, installed and configured correctly. Now, the last thing I want to point out before I let you guys go is if you run into any issues, either in this video with the installation process or setting things up or in any future videos, then what you can do is on the website, thenewboston.com slash social, there is a Discord link right here. If you join our Discord, there's actually a Docker channel that we have where we're gonna be discussing everything Docker related and helping anyone out with any issues at all. And as a bonus, if you wanna follow these other sweet social media channels, feel free to do so. However, now that we have everything installed and ready to go, we are ready to take a closer look into containers, and that is what we're gonna be doing in the next video. So ladies and gentlemen, I will see you then.